And so we're going to look at the transformation of a function in terms of finding the mapping formula for any point x, y that might lie on that function. And we're going to read everything that we can from this function just to get this formula. And so we are going to start with uh, stretches and squishes and reflections first. And so if I look here inside the, the brackets, what's being performed to the function here is we're multiplying 3 by whatever is being put into the function. That means it is a compression towards the y-axis by a factor of one-third. In other words, my x-coordinate is going to be one-third of whatever it was before. And now looking at any stretches or squishes for y, I can see that there's a 2 being multiplied by whatever comes out of the function. So in other words, the y-coordinate is going to be double what it was before. And so this is going to be a 2y. There are no reflections in the y-axis, because this is a positive value. But there is a reflection in the x-axis. And when something's reflected in the x-axis, the sign of the y-coordinate changes. Now I'm ready to deal with my translations. I can see I'm subtracting a 3 from the x. That means that any point is going to shift to the right or increase in value by 3 when it's mapped. And finally, the y-coordinate is going to increase by 1 because 1 is being added to the function at the end. And so this becomes 2y plus 1. And so you can actually make a mapping formula just by looking at the transformation of the function. You can use this formula to determine what the new key points are on your function.